With the recent updates from 343 showcasing all the changes coming with Seton Season 2, they've been all in different locations. So in this video, it's going to be a one-stop shop to showcase the 30 big changes coming with Season 2 for Halo Infinite. So if you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Are you excited about Season 2? Well, if you're watching this video, most likely you are. If you want to stay updated with everything happening with Season 2, well, make sure you subscribe because this channel keeps you updated with everything going on in Halo. So let's not waste any more time and just get right into that information. So there are five main sections I want to bring up in this video. There are sandbox changes, UI changes, audio changes, new modes, and new ways to play Halo Infinite, as well as customization and progression. So I'm going to timestamp all these sections if you guys want to skip to exactly what you want to listen to. Obviously, staying throughout the whole video gives you all the details. So first, let's talk about these sandbox changes coming with Season 2. Now, personally, I'd like to see a little bit more happening, but this is what's happening with Season 2. The big thing happening is that it's going to be a 10% melee reduction across the board in Halo Infinite. This is their way of finding a way to nerf the Mangler to where it's a two-shot beatdown set for right now being a one-shot beatdown. Now, this also does mess up the battle rifle a little bit as well. We're in social, it's going to be a three burst, then beat down for the kill. But in ranked, it will maintain its two shot beat down for the kill. Personally, I would like to see a little more consistency, but we'll see how this plays out. The Ravager's base non-charged shot will also see a damage increase as well. We'll see how it actually plays out because currently right now, you have to land all three bursts directly on a player to get a kill. And while in gameplay, that's very unlikely. So we'll see how much of a damage increase it actually Actually does receive. There are also some changes coming to attrition where a revived player will be able to move immediately after spawning it back into the game. These are kind of one of those smaller quality of life improvements that are just going to make the gameplay of the attrition that much better. Another huge change, this is actually a really big change honestly, is with the motion tracker for all your social modes that the outer edge detection will be enabled for people who are shooting and sprinting in social playlists. This will hopefully speed up the action quite a bit more, especially when it comes to free for all and helping seek out the players that are around you. We talked about melees a little bit earlier, but melee fights should be more consistent as well, where a lot of times right now you'll be meleeing and some Sometimes you'll melee not get any damage or you'll kind of phase through each other. They've tweaked the melee system a bit in Halo Infinite with Season 2, so hopefully you have much more consistent melee hits. Another big change is going to be the drop ball. It's going to be a slight performance increase. Now, they don't state exactly how the performance increase will happen. We'll have to do some breakdowns when it comes to Season 2's release. And also, the overshield will provide slightly more shielding, which is absolutely needed. That overshield, not much of a game changer. Hopefully, this extra shielding will help make it a little bit more effective. Also talking about colliding with things, the chopper collision, the splatter ability, damage Hesla has been increased. They, I'm sure just to make those spinning wheels in front of the chopper a little bit more and it's seeing how much you expect a chopper to have. Also the Warhog and Razorback, their resistance to flipping and bouncing has been increased and so they should be more grounded than you have them right now. And sadly guys, when it comes to the sandbox of the campaign, the tank gun glitch, as they refer to it as a glitch, is being removed. Personally, I actually really like the tank gun glitch. I'd hate to see it go away, but I'm pretty sure it'll help out with the integrity of the speedrunning community. And I'm pretty sure it's probably just like a fun developer thing that which is kind of left in there at launch. Next, we'll move into some of the UI changes coming in with Halo Infinite for season two. As the UI has definitely needs a lot of improvement, honestly. One of those is gonna be CSR bar progression will now reflect the progress made per match rather than over your game session. So you can have a better understanding of you how much you went up and went down. As recently revealed within the, one of the live streams which we made a video about, if you guys wanna check out that video, it's on the channel here. It states that the player outline options will give players the ability to modify the opacity. You can actually make it completely invisible now, which is an interesting thing. I'm gonna personally keep on the player outlines, but if you really wanna see them out of the way, it'd probably help out with like machinima modes and stuff like that. Definitely check it out. I hope this actually really does take into effect, but there are gonna be saying noticeable stability improvements. The team has resolved plenty of PC crashes, which I really hope so. Uh, basically ever since the mid season update, I, I play on PC and I've been experiencing essentially at least one crash per game session. And usually my game sessions are about three hours long. And also many times within ranked matches, I see just players just randomly drop out probably because their PC crashed. 
So I really hope to see that these improvements actually do take into effect. And also a really great feature that I can't believe wasn't there at launch, but BTP Fire Team members will be appearing in your squads now. Rather than just, rather than just having just randomized players within your squad, if you're matched up going in with a party of four, you'll be matched up with your party of four in your squad. That's pretty much all I would expect the game to play, but there you go. They also do mention though, if you jump in with more players than that, they'll try to keep everyone together. But if you have an odd player out, you know, sometimes it might be thrown onto a different team. Next section is audio. Guys, audio is actually really important when it comes to gaming. Well, actually probably about just as important as the actual visual presentation itself, in my opinion. The one thing that's gonna be huge, guys, is that the opponent's shield recharge sound is gonna be reduced. I would agree with this, because a lot of times I can clearly hear shields recharging within modes and it helps me identify like where players are on the map. So hopefully you can still hear it. I like being able to hear it, but I would like to be a little bit more keen ears being able to hear it rather than just being able just to play almost with speakers and be able to hear it just fine. Talking about being able to hear things just fine, the Grunt Birthday Party Skull sound effect volume has been increased within the campaign, which is great. Now, one of the coolest changes coming with this season two update is Jeff Steitzer's voice will be coming back for big team battle to call out all your awesome kill medals. Because it just doesn't feel like Halo when you don't hear the double kill, triple kill, overkill. Also with audio, the Spartan chatter has been balanced a little bit where they emphasize the more important aspects of what Spartans are saying rather than just being like, put out some damage. Like, cool, dude, nice to know. Didn't really help me out with that game. Also. I'm glad that Over Yonder's still in the game, but it's not very helpful. Now, a big thing that I think Halo Infinite's probably struggling the most with is having new experiences to play. And with Season 2, we're gonna get plenty of that as well with brand new modes to play. The biggest one being Last Spartan Standing, which is gonna be there at launch, part of the Interference event. We also have the return of King of the Hill that has some slight modifications, which we covered in a previous video. If you guys wanna check out those details, check out that video for sure. We have Land Grab coming into Halo Infinite, which is a brand new mode. The return of Rumble Pit for free for all, which is going to be absolutely awesome. We also have Ninja Slayer, which is swords and grapple shots. You have Vampire Ball, which is basically the player who has the oddball. Once they make a smack on a player, they receive 50% shields from that other player. So it'd be quite interesting to see how it plays out. It's also a one hit kill with the ball. So let's see how exactly how it plays out. I mean, I'm not going to really probably bother with it too much, but you never know. It actually could end up being kind of fun. Just like this next mode, Rocket Repulsors, which I am actually really looking forward to this one. The name speaks for itself. Everyone spawns with a rocket launcher and repulsors. And if you've ever repulsed a rocket shot, it's incredibly rewarding. With season two, we will also have a rotational playlist coming in, which I'm like, thank God. We have some cool new stuff coming in every other week or so, which we have Social Skirmish, they mentioned, Social Slayer, which I'm sure will probably involve different kind of weapon starts when it comes to the Slayer mode, right? Because we already have Team Slayer in the game, right? Team Sniper is coming back, which is fantastic. And Team Doubles. I know you guys like to sweat up in Team Doubles, so that's gonna be a great mode to play. And also, when it comes to the Academy, well, we're gonna have endless weapon drills available as well, so you can just grind out your skill level to get better at certain weapons. I'm definitely gonna be utilizing this for my battle rifle because sometimes I feel like I'm on point, other times I feel like I can't hit a single thing. And I think just having endless weapon drills where I can just shoot and shoot and just get used to the weapon and how it handles will definitely help me out with my precision within the game. Our last section is customization and progression. This has been a big pain point for the community guys. And one of the really great things that they're gonna be enabling cross core customization for some items within season two. Saying they're gonna be enabling things like helmets, visors, and some coatings as well across different cores. Uh, mainly across the cannon cores as they refer to them. So like the Mark Seven, the Mark V, and the core that's coming with Lone Wolves as these are kind of referred to as the cannon cores. Your fracture cores are pretty much gonna be left alone for the most part. We are going to be receiving a brand new core with Season 2, as well as a new Fracture core as well, which we've seen plenty of images of. The big change is that we're getting a brand new Battle Pass that comes with 1,000 credits within that Battle Pass. So you buy into a Battle Pass, and if you grind it all the way through for paying for it, you can get a free Battle Pass back, which is going to be awesome. I think it's a great way to kind of keep that endless cycle of people coming back and playing, giving them that incentive to keep playing, because nothing incentivizes people more than giving them free money. And as we showcased in a previous video, guys that the battle pass does contain a lot more free customization as well now with season two bringing a new pass you will be able to select either the heroes of reach battle pass or the new lone wolves battle pass they did mention though that you cannot grind through the free version of the previous battle pass once you purchase into it 
then you can grind through the entirety of the battle pass just fine. But if you're a free to play player, you can only unlock that current season's free content. Which of course limitations suck, but it's kind of understandable as you're a free to play player. Talking about incentivizing people to keep playing, one of the big changes coming with season two are weekly rewards. Gone are the days of emblems and backdrops, Coming in are now coatings, visors, and stances, as we've seen for the last two weeks within season one. So they've certainly made that update. They've even mentioned the original five weeks are becoming with this season two, with week one being a stance, week two being an assault rifle coating, week three being a razorback coating, and then we have a visor and also another stance following that week. But to unlock those weekly rewards, you have to complete challenges, which have been a big pain point within the community as well. And then we have seen this in the last couple of weeks, but they also did state that less frustrating and random challenges have been either reduced or completely removed, especially the stop enemy killing sprees. That's been completely removed from the game, which is fantastic. And for some bonus changes coming in for you guys, the shoulder pad for George is finally getting textured, which it does look awesome. They showcase it in a recent stream. Also the cyber showdown mohawk and visor that were kind of off centered are going to be properly centered now for season two. And those are all the changes coming with season two. So if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out the playlist right here. Got linked to all my Halo news and informational videos for you that guys right there. Thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.